that it's recording right. I was gonna check and be sure. This is hopefully the conclusion of the week of white folks just going crazy. You had, and I've, this is gonna sound pretty stupid complaining about a <laughs> team that my team lost to today, but oh, what was that Dolphins coordinator's name? Uh, oh, the, something Forrester. Oh, Johnny McCokeface or something yeah, like that. Yeah, man, storting up the, all the Colombian Bam Bam, the booger sugar. And my joke was going to be if he gave that to the offensive line, maybe they would have, you know, more enthusiasm in defending Jay Cutler because he absolutely sucks. But uh, maybe, you know, they knew what they were doing because they ended up beating the Falcons today. So. Screw them, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, this is harsh, but it's the way I feel about it, man. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have the um, – I think if, you know, you have like the um, sideline at Denver, mm -hmm. puff, puff, passing, who cares? It's legal there, right? Yeah. The man works in Miami. That's kind of what they do down there. It seems to me that cocaine <laughs> should be a job perk to have to tolerate <laughs> dealing with the Miami Dolphins organization. Yeah. I don't feel – I have feel bad for the guy. I really do. I think that he was just doing what he had to do to get by. If it don't come in a white envelope. Yeah, if, if it don't come in an envelope and I can't snort cocaine through it. I don't accept it as pay. I don't accept it as pay. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I just I, I thought that I thought the same thing. I mean, what's this guy doing put himself on video? He's making a wonderful entertainment bit for all of us. Yes. Who cares? It's his life, he's messing it up and good yeah. for the dolphins for getting rid of him. But I did think like it's Miami, y'all. Come on, listen up. <laughs> you got, you got to be kidding me. This is a shock to you. Why? Seriously, because you're dumb. He just walked into that room and it was on the table. He didn't take that in there with him. It? Huh? It's Miami, baby. <laughs> Always looks up without the powdered mm -hmm. sugar. No, like, what? Huh? Uh, huh? So what? <laughs> what? <laughs> just doing my morning yay yo. <laughs> For real, man. But yeah, I, I forgot that guy's name too. But something Forrester uh, and oh, the. Uh, <laughs> nobleness of your hooker girlfriend that's filming this video because she has to do it for uh, the, the racist reasons that this guy was it's trying to protect everybody on the offensive line like I you you had Donald Sterling thoughts running through your head as you were going to bed, thinking, oh, I'm going to cash in the same way his hooker did. Yeah, we were talking about Donald. We, Sterling. It was, it was strange because we talked about, like, how <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically what the man said last week, man, like with Cameron mm -hmm. Newton just putting on the show in front of the camera. He didn't even have the good decency to be Donald Sterling. He didn't need someone yeah. to, like, <laughs> secretly tape him. Like, no, no, let's, let's nah. make sure my makeup looks good, y'all. got you hooked up. League, if I'm doing this for you, I'm going to do it looking good. <laughs> It's still, to this day, the funniest thing about the Donald Sterling case is his ex-wife ends up suing his hooker for all the stuff that he gave her, and she won. That's California, baby. Ah, man. That, that gum right, she's going to win. There seems to be some, a little, as, as messed up as California can be, there seems to be some justice in that. Oh, it's great. It's oh, like, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> glorious. Nah, man, but nah, what I mean is like... Don't jilt the wife in the Bear Republic, baby. <laughs> yeah. You got to be smarter than that, I know. It's like, yeah, it's like the Californians, if you get divorced and you pay those taxes, yeah. how are you going to fuss about that? Mm -hmm. You know what, we know what California is. Oh, yeah. I, I'm totally, I'm with you. I'm totally, I got California's back there. I'm glad they won. Yeah. I'm totally glad it worked out that way. But speaking of California, speaking of stuff that is not really a shock, I guess we got to, and white folks going crazy, the whole Harvey Weinstein stuff broke this week and it's just it, it's where where's the shock in all this i don't i don't get it uh there's nothing cool about touching anybody that doesn't want you to touch them man woman guy or girl whatever it is uh but the years and years of the stories you heard about this dude and him it's i guess it's one thing for somebody to be come off like a total a-hole it's far worse for somebody to be considered a rapist but at the, and with every story that came out from every actress that had a story it's kind of like, ah, it's pretty believable you can definitely see that dude looking well looking the way he does doing that so and i just you know i just don't get the shock and all i don't either i don't understand why people are jumping off cliffs over we talked mm -hmm. about it a little bit at dinner and it's just yeah um <clears throat> plowing through the industry as quickly as I can, mm -hmm. 
this notion that Harvey Weinstein invented the casting couch. It's that industry, y'all. It's a horrible, it's, hor- the entertainment industry is a horrible, horrible industry, just like anything else that's that big and that strong and that mm-hmm. powerful. Looking at you, Catholic Church, mm-hmm. anybody that is that much, this is about power. Anybody mm-hmm. with that much power exploiting people who have nothing is nothing new. Harvey Weinstein yeah. didn't invent it, and he sure doesn't embody it, but boy, howdy, do I like watching him get cracked in the face for benefiting from it mm-hmm. because that stuff gets old. I, yeah. I'm tired of that junk. I'm tired of that junk. So I'm very, very pleased that Harvey, prick, though he, prick that he is, yeah. it's fun. I love it. I, I love it. Screw that guy and screw whatever else is coming his way. Good. Yeah, man. The one thing I didn't like was, you know, one, one of these days he's going to sit down and do a show about all the podcasts I listen to, but I realize nobody wants to listen to that. And the other thing I hate is when people sit down and do videos about the videos they're going to do. So I'm not going to do that either. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to do one of those this time, but not the next time. (laughs) But uh, uh, one thing I guess you need to know about me, I really like the Michael Rappaport's I Am Rappaport podcast. And they made a point that I really disagreed with this week about uh, some of the guys that came out with some of the allegations that they had towards people, and one in particular, uh, Terry Crews, and their take on it was, and I guess part of it, it didn't feel like they were trying to make it a joke, even though that's what will be said when they get the backlash from it, was, you are like, how Terry Crews going to be... You know, I don't even know who or what exactly happened. Is somebody grabbed his stuff? And they were like, basically, they summed it up with, like, "What's all the muscles for? Why are you not just going to bust somebody in the face? They do that to you. What do you lift all them weights for, Duke?" Well, the fact remains. I mean, that's uh, that's a job that pays very well, and you really think they're going to believe this ex-football player, former sex addict himself? over the word of a, some producer or whoever it was, uh, that's not only would he, once he gets out of jail, now he can't get work. So I, I just thought their take on it was like really shocking to me. And I, I didn't expect to hear that from them. And I thought that was, I, I, I was I was surprised at you. Yeah, it was, I was surprised at you. It's incredibly frustrating when people start saying stuff like that. Uh, it's just, um, I think it just it says an awful lot about how far away we are from any solution to any of this stuff, anything, because yeah. you cannot talk about violence. You can't talk about violence. We're talking about domestic violence. But the problem with domestic violence is men beating up women. Mm-hmm. The problem with fill-in-the-blank violence is person A beating up person B. Whoever A and B are... Mm-hmm. That's the problem. And the biggest frustration with things like child abuse, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, is that morons that want to hide behind this whole system of cover and shadow and la di da will never get down to the brass tacks of it's person A exploiting person B. Yeah. Because if we start talking about, well, it's different, well, you know, it happens to guys too. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And it does. Well, you know, child abuse is just, yes, and it's unbelievable that stuff like that happens to kids, but the fact that it happens to anybody and we place it on a level, that's a huge part of the problem. Mm -hmm. You see, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we've got to address this stuff. I wish we would address this stuff as violence, as abuse, as in the case of Terry Crews and all of the women and the men, and I mean, we talked about it earlier, man, I'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. The exploitation of people that have over the people that don't have. That is a huge problem, and mm-hmm. it is absolutely grotesquely heinous, probably the most heinous element of humankind. And I've, used, I've said this to people before, and they get huffy, but I don't care. Here's my problem with the stuff as far as grabbing somebody's you know, chest mm-hmm. or you know, grabbing Terry Crews by the crotch. He's usually chest naked. Here's the problem with stuff or something that drives me crazy. Because we all understand greed. We all understand cash money and piling it up. Mm-hmm. Okay, we invented money, y'all. Yeah. Sex is biological. So how pervasive is that in the existence of human beings that, ooh, I want that. If you will exploit people for money, what will we do biologically in the name of sex? Even if, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a horrifyingly gross subject. I hate stuff like this so very much, and that's why. But but I also hate nitpicking and breaking it down like we're talking about. It's like, don't, you're seriously telling me you can give Terry Crews a hard time because he's into, he'll take care of himself. 
You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that is absolutely pathetic, and you really missed the point, just like the yeah. man was saying. If you think – you've got to be kidding me. That is just – stuff like that just disgusts me. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing as, you know – Think of it this way. I don't know Terry Crews, so this might be a ridiculous example because mm-hmm. I'm going to use friends. Mm-hmm. If one of your friends comes to you and she says, right, let me, let's do it this way, make a third party. One of your friends tells you a story about being sexually assaulted. And she says that when she reported it to, the, to the police, the first thing they asked her is, well, what were you wearing? Mm-hmm. Tell me that's not the same thing. Yeah. It's the, it's yeah. the exact same, well, how come you didn't just beat him up? But you, I mean, you, you could have said no, didn't you? You know that goes on in that part of town. Yeah, I filed a rape claim because I did say no. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 what were you wearing? How much did you have to drink, honey? All that yeah. stuff happens, and it's all insane. And we it's so easy to deny that stuff. And then you have literally mm-hmm. Terry Crews' story coming out. Well, he's a big guy. How, well, there's no how way. How did he let that happen? I, stuff like that, that's the same thing. Uh-huh. Oh, boy, does stuff like that make me crazy. But that takes me back to, I think it takes both of us back to, why well, we're so glad that Harvey's head is on the guillotine right yeah. now. Whatever ends up happening, just as long as it ends up with him in prison, it's, I'll still align from the Michael Rappaport podcast, getting the Wonder Bag treatment, no olive oil. Uh, as long as that ends up happening, then fine. Uh, make all the jokes you want to that you know, I disagree with. As long as that ends up happening, have at it. Yeah, our, our joke thing, I'll, probably, I'll promise I'll get off this in a second, but that was something we were talking about at, at dinner as far as Harvey Weinstein, but the industry, just to, we'll bring it back now to the specific industry uh, entertainment stuff. People constantly make fun of the Lindsay Lohans and uh, what's her face, Amanda Bynes and Justin yeah. Bieber's and all the, the Corys and all uh, these a- kids. A- Winehouse. All these kids that wind up coked out of their mind when they're little kids and lottie da and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And some people, maybe they just have issues. Some folks just have problems. But some, gonna happen pe- some people are going to medicate themselves because do that much research into sex abuse, that much, and you will find out that one of the most pervasive things among people that were abused as kids sexually is abuse, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's the whole thing. We all made fun of Corey Feldman when he wanted to turn into Michael Jackson. Then he came out and told everybody exactly why he did it, and he was still a punchline. So yeah. you, that stuff is incredibly frustrating. And it goes back, like we were talking about with them um, the other day, a couple of dudes on the radio in Atlanta were talking about uh, Weinstein, and they were killing him. And, He's you know, trying to basically justify it. Now, they were killing him for a moment. Yeah. They were okay about, oh, it's just terrible, it's so awesome things that was happening. But the man's right, because eventually you get to a point where they're talking about how um, Angelina Jolie had, had said, like, you know, on, yeah, yeah, this happened. And I swear, yeah, he's right. Literally, the guy's quote is like, it's not like I blame him, but come on. I'm like, well, you're part of the problem then, aren't you, buddy? That yeah. stuff is infuriating, and that's what makes me so bad about abuse stuff is that you are literally the power away from being that person. Whether you admit that you're admitting that or not, that's what you're saying. Like, well, if uh, Angela Jolie came to me and needed a job, I mean, hey, I'm going to get what I can get. That's what you said. I ain't even put words in your mouth. Mm-hmm. You just said... That's what was done to her. And I don't blame the guy. That's what you said. I'm like, yeah. dude, dude, why do we even have an FCC? Yeah. That is ridiculous, man. But the next time some crazy man-hating feminist comes up talking about rape culture, you might want to pipe down and listen. Because if you're going to say stuff like that at your job about Harvey Weinstein and freaking mm-hmm. Angelina Jolie, feminist might be right. Mm-hmm. She might be right. She's at least right about you, Hondo. Yeah. Yeah. Frustrating. Crazy stuff. White not even, White nonsense. Yeah, it's not it's not not cool and you know, who knows uh what, where it's gonna end up but it and part of it I guess goes to show where you know the lowest the highest rung of showbiz powerful white guy pain doesn't really compare to real life pain and hopefully he'll get to see you know some real life pain and that's what that's what we get to hopefully look forward to from good old harv at the very least we will get some more of that good old california judicial justice because um Mm -hmm. uh, mrs weinstein is going to take him to the cleaner so at the very very least financially there'll be some justice and man if we can get that i I just hate that if we can get that bonus (laughs) yeah man that's where Really ca- cashes cashes out, yeah. and like, another thing, like we were talking, about, I just hate that that's the guy that gets so much credit that he doesn't deserve from some of the movies I like from the '90s. He was the employer of a, a lot of people that I like, but 
never once had an original idea. Yeah, this is not a writer, not a director. It's just a guy that puts money into stuff and really doesn't yeah. even put money into stuff because it's not like in the early days he was green lighting this stuff. He went and it's kind of like I talk about Sony Pictures Classics, which is a company I love, mm -hmm. but they do what Harvey Weinstein used to do, but he doesn't want it to be like that. He wants credit for it, like the man mm -hmm. said. And he wants, like, it's Jerry Reinsdorf. Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating, man. Nope. All that being said, Sorry, I'm speaking of uh, crazy Hollywood stuff, I went to watch a movie this weekend. Yeah. That was really, really, really good. Uh, I dug it. If you're uh, into funky, crazy sci fi stories, that you. It, it is Blade Runner 2049 to get that, get that out. But it's very similar to the first one in that I'm able to follow the story and get where it's going uh, while we're watching it, but when it's all said and done, you're kind of like, now what was that? What's really happening here? Uh, so definitely, and I think it, for me, the ultimate good review is letting you know that it's, it's worth going to see in a movie theater, just because it's uh, directed by uh, Denny Villeneuve, I think, uh, how you say the guy's name? He directed uh, the it's most recently their arrival. Uh, that uh, was it. Prisoners or some, some one of the, something like that. The, the Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, maybe from a few years ago. Anyway, uh, I Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal. I think it was Prisoners. Uh, so and just known for doing the whole kind of scope cool looking big stuff movie yeah. and uh keeps keeps that thing going and that's what you if you're going to direct blade runner that's what it's got to be i agree uh and one of the i think the coolest things and sh shoot what happened <laughs> with my uh movie experience was uh i knew going in just from some of the reviews i'd heard that it was on the lengthy side so i sat through the first couple of trailers and like okay I need to go take a bathroom break or I'm not going to make it. So I come back into the theater as like, I think I was like the opening scroll on the screen of telling you what has been going on with the replicants and what a Blade Runner is. And I really <laughs> have, and what the, the, what the Wallace uh, Corporation is in the movie. And I really don't think any of that stuff helped you at all <laughs> as far as explaining the movie. Because I, I was trying to think, one of the things we were talking about earlier is, you probably could sit down and watch this without having seen the original and get enough of it, but the little payoffs that they give you from the first one aren't nearly as important. So you you really need to go watch the original Blade Runner for nothing else, just to know what you're getting into. Yeah, just to say you saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Because because that's a good one to go check oh, out. Oh yeah. Um, get the big like crazy yeah. blu-ray box you can watch whatever version you want i think i think all of them but yeah. one is on there because even after that they did another one which is pretty much just the same thing cleaned up again but and that, oh, that, that was a, they're good <laughs> that was a frustrating thing about that movie back in the day and of uh, just hearing all these different rumors about the different versions of the movie and this one has the voiceover in it and yeah. you finally get to see it and you kind of well i kind of thought it was fine without it i liked it better without it there's yeah. a reason that when you watch that like the one that has forever been the definitive one until it became the thing to put new stuff in the theater and make money off of it again was the, you know, everyone's seen the cover, director's mm -hmm. cut, Lottie Die. It takes yeah. the voiceover out, mm -hmm. and I'm with you. It's better without it. Because when you hear the voiceover, it's really not that good. It's yeah. just Harrison doing his little read, and you're it's, like, come it's on. the thing we talk about. The first one is very, very vague, and I mean that as a compliment. I love stuff like that. Who, who cares? It doesn't matter, especially by the time you get to the end of it, man, yeah. where if you've never done cocaine, which I haven't, but boy, I feel like I have because mm -hmm. I've seen Blade Runner a lot. Oh, yeah. It's awesome, <laughs> and that's the thing is it like kind of over-explains. Um, I, I think it does, man. It's, it's mm -hmm. better without it. I'm totally with you. you just, just let it kind of just roll with it. Yeah, do do whatever, whatever you and want to with that sucker. So you, you, you got Blade Runner. 2049, and they really don't waste much time past the the opening scene with basically the answering some of the rumors and questions of the first one. They basically tell you, yeah, and then once you get your answer, you're kind of like, 
Well, it had to have been that way. Of course it was. So like 10 minutes in, they're like, the guy that designed it, he left a flaw in it so they could blow it up. <laughs> because I loved it. That was my favorite thing about that. Mm -hmm. And people whined, and I'm like, y'all are the ones that complain forever. That's brilliant. <laughs> that's totally awesome. And uh, that I think that that's one of the, the coolest things is, uh, you know, I'm an idiot, sorry. They, they explain what's going on with uh, Ryan Gosling's character, like, right on first in the things, beginning. First things first. He's pretty. Oh, he's a, That's the first thing they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, brother. What you need to know about the Ryan Gosling character. Good looking man. Good looking, good looking dude, <laughs> He's brother. a good looking man. <laughs> and uh, you're kind of like, okay, and them explaining what he is, you basically get your answer to what Deckard was. I'm not spoiling anything. But then you're kind of like, how else could it be any other way? You think a human can track down a replicant? They have to be replicants to do it. So you're like, okay, that makes sense. But it's not like big revelation. Just finally you get some confirmation from somebody that makes decisions with the movies. You'll be like, yes. Are you happy now? Yeah, people have been talking about it forever, man. And that, by the way, is what I meant by the unicorn thing. Oh, cool. That, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> so, but and but then you finally get that answer, and it's, kind of, it's no skin off your back. Kind of, well, that's how, well, that's what it has to be. Yeah, the unicorn vision, right? Yeah. And then when Spinner lets him go, he leaves him the little origami one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Spinner's one, too. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying, man. Yeah. And uh, there's a <clears throat> cool little uh, scene with him in there. <clears throat> uh, and you get to see him all chill in his yeah. nursing home. and uh, Hanging out of Donna style <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on <the> New Earth. <laughs> yeah. And so, th th so that's what I'm talking about, like the little uh, tips of the cat to the original movie. Yeah. You you wouldn't understand, why is he talking to this this old white-haired James <laughs> Edward Old most? And what, <laughs> what sense does this make? What's he know about a Husker? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, and... Uh, one of the, Sean Young is credited in the movie as being in it, but I think she just lent her voice. And I, even her voice, I think, would have to have been doctored to... Because I, th I think they straight up Princess Leia or <laughs> like straight from uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Because there's no way all the makeup in the world is going to make Sean Young look like 1982 Sean Young. I was going to say, Sean Young, come on 1982. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's... that's no diss to her, just I, that's the facts of the matter. These are this uh, time. Harrison Ford does not look like 1982 Harrison Ford. Uh, that's that's another thing we'll get to in a minute. This, this is something we disagree on. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she's credited in the movie, and her character from Rachel uh, shows back up in a really cool way. And you kind of, if without sitting down and watching the original Blade Runner, you're kind of like, who is that? Explain this to me. And you know you could you could be that person that has to lean over in the middle of the movie theater like I I've been before. I've like, been inside like, before. What? Well, what? What's what's he this thing? He was with them. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love Seinfeld oh. talking about how he's the person that really doesn't get anything. Oh. I thought he was with that guy. Why does he want him dead? Oh, that's the same guy. Oh. <laughs> what? The only like out loud comment I've ever made during a movie, man. Um, I think it was about an hour and ten minutes into the, into the third Matrix. Oh, God. And also, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was all I managed to say. I hate this movie, and I hate the people that like this it. This is stupid. So, uh, and it's just uh, to totally cool. Uh, and it's one of those kind of movies that when you're sitting down and you're watching it, and you're kind of thinking like, well, you know, I, know, I get people complain about the length of the movie, but it kind of needed all this stuff and then a day after watching it you kind of sit back and you think about it a little bit more and you're kind of like it didn't need all that <laughs> it, it really didn't i mean uh they try to build up this thing in the movie this this thing in the in the movie called the wallace corporation which basically is apparently who makes the replicants and all this artificial intelligence that is prevalent in this Blade Runner world and every, and that character is played by Jared Leto who is the uh, uh, head of that organization you just kind of 
every scene with that dude except the last one, you're kind of like, who who is he supposed to be? And why do people care what he thinks or wants? Because who really is the cool, coolest part of the character? The character is named Love. I don't think they ever say her name in the movie, but uh, she's played by an actress named Sylvia hoax i think it's her name i had to look it up because she was that good she is the coolest thing in the movie and she's the big bad guy that uh uh joe k whatever name you want to, it, ryan Gosling's character uh has to beat to make sure that everything that's happening in the movie happens and uh you kind of get even even after the movie and you kind of sit down and you think about it it's it's one of those kind of deals like okay what they're trying to make sure happens happens in the movie and the people that don't want it to happen you're kind of like why why did they want to keep this from happening why would this be such a terrible thing if this happens like so it's it's similar to the original blade runner that it's going to have people formulating opinions and talking and debating for the next 30 years till they do it again. So I, Good. in, in, in that sense, uh, it, I think it accomplished what it set out to do. So, yeah. uh, by all means, go check it out and see what you think. Cause I really dug it and I'm trying to <clears throat> be sure I got everything out. I wanted to say about it. Cause I, I, I really, really liked it. And going in, I didn't know if I would or not because I, it could, because, because of who's in it, uh, not, I'm hit or miss with Ryan Gosling. Uh, sometimes I enjoy his stuff, and sometimes I'm like, ah, I didn't, you know, could have done without that. And uh, another point is kind of messed up at the end of the movie when they get to the Deckard character. Uh, you really kind of get... <laughs> Color Red shows up and horrible yeah. things happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, that's where I, that's honest God what I thought was going on. And the... In a two-year span, Harrison Ford's like, I'm on a mission to kill off all the characters of the childhood of this generation. Indiana Jones 5 will be 10 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> you know, Kylo just shows up and lops his head off. But uh, I really thought that's where they were going with this movie at the end of it. Like, okay, well, he just wanted to wanted to, wanted to show up and uh, just uh, die again. I'm going to sit here and die. <laughs> George gave me a big check to die in the last one. Yeah, like, you know, what, what do you got for me? I'm Harrison Ford. I'm just going to show up and mumble and die. Each time when my character's dead, just tell me I'll stop coming to work. You really see what uh, <laughs> Liam Neeson's been talking about for the past couple of years. About, where he's been like, will y'all please stop casting me? Mm-hmm. In these action roles because when you see a 60 plus year old guy in a fight scene at the end of the movie man it's hard to suspend that disbelief because some of those punches are just kind of like, and and i get it he's he's not supposed to be out there you know like limber and you know just swinging for the fences but it's not a believable fight, and you know it's it's not like he puts up much of one because they pretty much just kind of lock him on the head. Like, oh, you're done. Come on, come on. <laughs> but it just you know you know do, do we really need to see that? No, I'm with you. I, I think the um, the dad revenge porn genre is one mm-hmm. that could die very oh, quickly, and I'd be totally okay with it because none of those are worth a darn. Is I guess what makes it hard to suspend disbelief is how long the fight scene goes on. You kind of like, this should not be lasting mm-hmm. this long. Mm-hmm. There's no way this should be going on this long especially when uh there's some other things that happen in the movie where some other guys show up to kind of put a stop to it You're like why is this taking y'all that long just show up and have kylo lop his head off and confidence just be done with shocking. it <laughs> confidence yeah. in the future is shocking <laughs> yeah so there's uh it's it's, it's but the, the ultimate good review i think is it's worth going to see in a movie theater, and I'll be buying the <laughs> and I'll be buying the Blu-ray. That's a double whammy. So that's my seal of approval. Where you go check it out, and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, but I gotta have a copy of it. I'm with you. That's mine. Um, I haven't seen Blade Runner two. I probably will. I'm just up and down on it because I love the first one so much. I'm like, I'm done. 
But at the same time, if it's fun, why not? Yeah. And uh, whether I watch the movie or not, I'll definitely buy the soundtrack. Only because I oh, finally... It's, it's, a, it's awesome. I finally ran down the original soundtrack, which yeah. you can't buy the original soundtrack because the guy that... Vangelis, the guy that did the music, sued so, for it. Oh, okay. He won't release it. Okay. But what happened is this guy, like... They will put it out anyway. Well, a guy went <laughs> yeah. and basically re-recorded it because... Mm-hmm. That's just that. He owns the original recordings. He does not own the songs. So a guy basically did a cover version of it, which is the exact same thing because it's okay. all keyboards anyway. And I'm like, cool, I'll buy that. It's great. So that's going to happen. Like the soundtrack's happening one way or the other. Uh, and I'm, I'm that dude, too, that kind of just got it ingrained in my brain with every movie, no matter where. I have to sit through the credits now. Yeah. And even knowing that there, pro- there was not going to be a cut scene at the end, it was worth it just to sit and listen just to listen. that music. It's I'm the same way. very, very good. It, it, it kind of, maybe it's a bad, maybe I'm doing the movie a disservice to be actually sitting there, your first time watching it, really thinking like, oh man, I think this movie's going to win an award just for music. They would say, well, maybe the music didn't do its job. If you're thinking that while well, watching it, it's like, no, it's just that good. Uh, so uh, after the movie's over you're sitting around and you're kind of listening to some of the uh, high marks from the score and you're kind of like well this was pretty dang good that's awesome that I'm excited about it's been a while since I got a new album to listen to I need, I need yeah. that in my life yeah man awesome so if, even going for that just going and considering it a concert you, you, I think you'd enjoy it for that yeah man yeah, it's good stuff. I'm I'm glad that it's doing well. I mean, as far as like all like it's the same thing we thought about before. But all I care about is the people that dug it, and dig it. That's yeah. all that matters, man. Yeah. So I am happy that you know, no one. I don't know. I just, I just haven't heard anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. People whining about how much it's making, but we talked about that earlier. That's all that crap is relative. Who cares? Yes, that's a that's a type of argument. I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. do do you really have skin in that game? Uh, yeah, and, on, and it's kind of know? one of those things where it's like, man, if that's the part that you're going to criticize, then it must have been pretty good. Yeah, because if you're bypassing everything else, then mm-hmm. okay, that's it. Just seems like. You know, Barry Bonds had a weak throwing arm. It's like, God, how far, how far down the rung of accolades did you have to get before you came to that? Especially, well, when you, But I got to it. That especially was my point. when you consider the guy was a left fielder. They kind of told you that. Yeah. Bonds' yeah. range, he'd have been in center field. If he could throw, he wasn't in center field. Mm-hmm. So what, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? But yeah, that, that is what I thought, too, man. It's like, that's awesome. Because I had the same, you know, my, my movie that I love that – the rest of the world saw and hated was Age of Ultron and that's always the thing I use for it too is like really didn't make as much money as Avengers 1 as the criticism you have keep going there's plenty of stuff in that movie to criticize just come up with something better than that man oh, yeah man Thor in the cave makes no sense it's just dumb. too too much time with Hawkeye yeah um Black Widow everything Black Widow Hulk is the dumbest thing in that whole movie and remember I love that I actually like Age of Ultron better than the first one it's not better than the first one I just like it better than the first one <laughs> But all the stuff in it that I don't care for, there's lots of things, man. Lots of stuff that I like about that movie. But yeah. Cash, come on. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, I don't, I don't get any of that, so who cares? <laughs> it didn't cost me uh, what it cost the movie theater to make it, so when it doesn't make it back, I don't get to be like, see, told you. Yeah. You didn't listen to me, did you? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, considering that you did not. I, again, the only thing it didn't do was make as much as the first one. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good return on investment. Yeah, man. You know, I think they did okay. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't haven't slammed on the brakes on any of the rest of them. I mean, we've only had forty-seven more movies and eighteen TV shows since then. I guess they're still making money on them. Uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, I don't. I didn't remember seeing a trailer for this before. Uh, the movie the other day, but definitely the, the poster's already up for Ragnarok, and I'm gonna be there, so I guess they're doing something right. I think they're okay. Yeah. I think they're doing all right. So that's, but you know, that's that's the, one of the good things this time of year is, you know, for, for every movie like a Blade Runner or a Ragnarok, uh, there's some other movies that kind of sneak in there to get you kind of interested, like uh, the. Jackie Chan has a movie out called The Foreigner that yeah. looks really good. Uh, the, the freaking, uh, even the Happy Death Day like, looks kind of interesting. Probably won't go 
check it out, but it's, that looks like a red boxer. You know, so you, you get those movies to file away. To think, I'll check that out, you know, uh, towards the end of the year or something yeah, like that. Totally. Winter sets in and i got to stay in the house. By golly, I'll be hitting yeah. these. Check yeah. these fellers out. Yeah, yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot of – there's no crappy pay-per-view to watch tonight or anything like that, but I guess there was some – wrestling news to talk about uh, this week if you even care <laughs> yeah oh yeah I'm, I'm totally down for discussing the wrestling because i do loves it yeah the, one of the i guess one of the things coming off of last sunday i was almost kind of upset that you had to sit the rock like man i want to watch smackdown i don't want to watch this uh but smackdown had probably one of the best uh made sense promos in a very long time when it was the why set me why promo he's like well i'll tell you why because uh i was on raw y'all said they were misusing me and i came over here and with the promises of all this stuff you know it's the same old crap so that's why and you kind of like you, you just sit and you think about it like that makes some of the best sense of anything that's been said on this show in a very long time for those of us that don't worship and suckle at the teat of shane mcmahon yeah. I'm super glad to hear it. Land yeah. of opportunity. Uh, Jinder Mahal's got Come your on. championship belt there, buddy. Come on. Come on. So yeah, it was great. I, my favorite thing about it is that there was nobody in Sammy's ear being like, but say it cockier. Say, say it cockier, Sammy. You're, you're a heel now, so you got to be cocky. Ramp they up did, the... They didn't. He just went out there and kicked it. He mm -hmm. basically used the same voice, and I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. Just talk. Yeah. Just talk. Because the thing is, Shane is the heel. Uh -huh. He is. Shane's Shane's the dick here. Yeah. Sammy's still a good guy. You can boom if you want to. Mm -hmm. He almost cost us Shane jumping off the cage. Well, he didn't. Shane jumped like a moron. <laughs> I, you know me, I wanted the heel finish of all time. I wanted him to leave and be like, heck with you people. Yeah. But no, I loved it. I totally, I totally agree. It was strange, man, because I actually did tune into Raw, which is really unusual. Um, and a lot of it was fun. A lot of it was real cool, and obviously they had to load both barrels because they were coming off a of pay-per-view. Yeah. But some of it was real cool, and then uh, SmackDown was a lot of fun. I, th mm -hmm. I think the only thing I really did on SmackDown was that. Just mm -hmm. I was waiting until Kev got a mic. I'm like, yeah, I want to see this. Yeah. It was cool, man. I totally agree. But it is good. I agree. That reality-based stuff where you like... Remember that thing that happened backstage? Let's, let's bring that up. That's awesome. Yeah. That's totally cool. And even if they like... If you set it up that way, and then just let it lie and then come back to it, it's even better. I mean, if you yeah. just if you just referenced it, that's awesome. But if you did it intentionally, God, that's even cooler, man. Yep. Awesome. So uh, I didn't know if it was official that Neville was released or not. Uh, you let me know that that's a done deal. As far as I know, that is, that is a done, <laughs> Moses done. on the mountaintop etched in stone. So, uh, so that, that went down, and it's one of those kind of – situations it's almost like an Austin Aries because kind of how, how could you really blame the guy yeah that's, I, why, that's why not that's our thing man like everybody oh Enzo sucks Enzo Costin Neville I don't we've talked about it a lot man there there are just some people for whom the paycheck is not going to be enough there are people for whom it is going to be enough there are people that that's not going to do it yeah that was one of those cats man and I can yeah. definitely see especially that guy because Cody Rhodes is somebody that came up through WWE, worked WWE, only ever worked WWE. And then he left, and look what he's turned himself into. Yep. Neville already had to do this to get to WWE in the first place. So a guy like that going back out and booking his own dates, mm -hmm. yeah. it's just going right back to what he is. Not, not new to him. So it's yeah. like, that's totally cool. But yeah, it's the same thing we always talk about with people coming and going. Some folks want to work WWE, some people don't. And ultimately, the question is the check, yeah. except for the very, very few. How much is it worth to you? The very, very few that are brought in and advised with creatively, which will never be anybody from the outside. So, yeah, man, it's like, and it's totally awesome. Like, job security, I'm a professional wrestler, man. I can pay my bills forever. Dude, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with that, unless it's not you. Yeah. And then you go over here and do your own thing, man, because now Neville pretty much will book himself, and that's mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. Or Pac, I'm assuming he's going to go back to being Pac. That worked. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it was funny. I was listening to uh, 
I love unreasonable people on both sides of arguments. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember what. Freak out. Yeah, Meltzer was whining about something. <laughs> well, go ahead. In the middle of his show, he's all like, oh, okay, so this is, uh, he said whatever show he was watching. And he's like, yeah, and so-and-so just got beat, and, you know, that's that for that team with the tag belt. So that means, you know, the ricochet just took the pinfall. So that, that might be pertinent going forward. And he's like reviewing, I think it was the review for Hell in a Cell. And people get on the comment section and go, you can't believe it's about New Japan. You're supposed to be reviewing all this about New Japan. He's talking about Ricochet taking a loss in New Japan, therefore handing over his half of whatever tag title he had, because he's coming to NXT. Yeah. It does tie into the product. I promise. Yeah. It's like, look, man, y'all can't it's be as, make sense. you can't be as unreasonable as him. I mean, yeah. my God, don't don't just lose your minds mm -hmm. over everything. Yeah. He's talking about something that is WWE pertinent. And Ricochet will be fun, but I, he could be. I don't know. I think all those guys would be better off if, let me say, 205 was the same thing. Yeah. And then I would be happy. So, man, that, I, any anytime you get a chance to see somebody like that on a bigger stage a little bit more often, like, I, well, I, you know, I, I would take that chance. Yeah, Ricochet's cool, man. Yeah, my, it ultimately goes back to what I keep saying, but it's because I really feel that way. Anybody that wants to go there, man, go. Yeah. Do your thing, man. Heck yeah. Do we need to uh, bring up anything else that's <laughs> pertinent or anything like that? I don't know. I'm not, I really didn't do much of anything except uh, had a weird weekend last weekend because everybody was off. Tech was off. Falcons were off. Lenny and Ida was off. Okay. And then everybody played. And uh, the Tech Miami game was actually quite enjoyable. It's just, man, you just you get that close and like every mm -hmm. possession matters. And it's like, it's just. We had a couple of possessions in the third quarter. It was just like, ooh, I don't know about this one. I just doesn't have that feel. But it was good. I mean, the game was actually quite good. Um, and the Falcons played today and lost another one. But like we said, at least it's the AFC. So as long, long as they stomp, you know, Tampa and New Orleans and Carolina, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, those those are the only ones that. that matter. And uh, if you want easy money, they'll win next week because everybody and their mom is going to be like, oh, man, they lost last week to the – Freaking! God, who beat us today? Oh, the, the Dolphins. Dolphins. Oh, there's no way they're gonna go By to Fox. Field goal. They're not gonna go to Foxborough and get a win, man. It's gonna be like the Super Bowl this year. Take the Falcons, because yeah. you'll probably get good odds, and you might make an awful lot of money. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then the United game was just super frustrating today. We just just off. It's like if you watched. It was two games. Offensively, it's like watching Matt throw to Julio all day, and it's like that much overthrown every time. Mm -hmm. Every time. And then defensively, it's like, okay, top half of the ninth, and you're the home team, and you know you just have to play defense, but you're at, you have to make like 96 outs before they call the inning. It's just like endlessly like, man, we're yeah. never going to do enough to get this point. And yeah. the point's cool. The only frustration is that Chicago won, so that puts them in third, and now we're in fourth. And fourth will still get you a home game in the playoffs, which is really all I want. I just want those guys. I thought the playoffs had already started. No, no, not yet. They're still okay. scrambling. What, what's going on is that as far as the East is concerned, Nobody that is outside the playoff field can get in. So that might be it for a couple of weeks. And nobody's coming up. It's just that those six, and now you got to see where they're going to go. Okay. But got to, got to, got to keep fourth place. We have to. Just because I want the, the fans to get a home game. Just one playoff home game in that building. That would be awesome. Oh, worth it. That's all I want. I want them to break that record a third time. Oh man, that's well. One of the things that happened in that building this week is that I heard the Garth Brooks concert sounded like crap. We talked about that. Man. So I, I had a feeling that was coming. We discussed that, man. When I went to Tech Tennessee, man, you couldn't hear the bands, and it's like yeah. not designed for that, guys. Uh -huh. But my thing that I think is so funny is everybody freaking out and losing their minds because boy, everyone knows the dome sounded like a peach. Oh god, it was so wonderful. <laughs> Any venue has got that many seats and it's going to sound did like you crap. Think? Yeah, for real. Yeah, and I guess that's my other thing is people were like laughing and joking and having a good old time and I'm like you want to close it? Mm -hmm. You probably yeah. don't want to close it. Mm -hmm. Who cares? If you're dumb enough to buy a ticket to an 85,000 seat concert you don't yeah. deserve good sound and you're too drunk to care anyway. The type of people I want to see are never going to play a place like that in the first that's place. That's right. Oh god. Yeah, you go to anything that's that many people it's not going to sound good but like we talked yeah. about it man the sound goes up comes right back down it's not mm -hmm. a venue for that stuff man. And that's okay. I think it's awesome. It's for football. In the monster drugs. 
so. <laughs> it is for the team sports. Yeah. It's that good stuff. But no, music, music's not a thing there. Again, Tennessee scored 42 points. I didn't hear Rocky Top one time. That's all you need to know. And they were sitting, I was right there. The band was right there. And I couldn't hear them because the sound in that building is not good. That's luck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my point. It was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. It's like it was the greatest thing ever. Forty-two <laughs> points is an awful lot of Rocky Top. I didn't have to hear it one time. Oh, praise but him. That's the point. It's <laughs> praise like, him. It's gonna sound like crap. Now that the sound in that building is designed for one thing, and it's for Atlanta fans to clap and spell out ATL, and for Falcons fans to just scream on third down, and it does mm -hmm. this, and it does this. Mm -hmm. Watch the game on TV, man. It works for what they want this for what they want it to do. It's awesome. If All Garth right. and Trisha are stupid enough to book a show there, which I, we talked about, like, the, the promotional materials for that were just awesome because it's Garth leaning over the top of the building. It was like Godzilla. <laughs> so he's about to eat the thing, man. Hey. Oh, crap in this dome. For real, man. <laughs> yeah, what, what was our song that we came up with? We were joking about it, man. Oh, oh shoot. If I can think of it, I'll sing it for you guys. I've had enough of this beer to sing. Thunder oh. Road. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> and I... Glad I didn't know how bad this place would sound when I booked this show. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> For real. <laughs> like, good Lord. So, that's what's up. That is what's up, by gum. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, y'all.